people. Some of them only have like one family living on one island, and, and so they're they're just very, very you know they vary a lot, uh-huh. and um, there there are plenty of villages that are must sees when you come here, and uh, that's uh, you know with with natural phenomena. Uh, with just beautiful, beautiful um, landscapes. Yeah, I can mention the the island of Michenes, which is the westernmost island, with all the puffins, for instance. And um, I can mention a small village called Jex, uh, which is up north on the island of Estre, and Saxon, which is another beautiful, beautiful um, village on the island of Stremai, which is the biggest island. It's um, it's often used as a film location for for ads. I know that it's been used in some English ad as well for for glasses <laughs> <laughs> and for Carlsberg. I think it was Specsavers or something it's called. Okay. And um, it's, it's just very, yeah. It just doesn't look like anything else you've seen before. And uh, there are plenty of villages. I, I love the the southernmost island, Suvoroi, um, which has beautiful nature and it's always it's very accessible. That island you can also come with wheelchair and everything and are totally up to the mountains and you can see the birds and yeah there are just so many different possibilities and of course you have to see the capital as well it's one of the smallest capitals in the world but well but it still has you know cozy cafes and local designer shops that sell you know knitted knitted products on local produce uh you probably know the the sweater from the series the killing uh-huh. um, it was designed by two girls that have their shop here in, in Torsan and um, well there are just plenty of different possibilities so there are many things to do when's the best time of year to visit you said about the summertime there's a direct flight but does it matter what time of year you go no it's, uh, it's possible to come uh, all year it's just that you know uh, we do have the most of the tourists here in the summertime that's when it's most busy mm-hmm. and um, a lot of people come here because they like to see birds and of course, if you want to see birds, you have to come in the summertime. And also, if, if you like to see the the light, the total daylight of almost 24 hours, it's, you have to come in the summertime. Mm-hmm. But actually, you can visit all year, and except from the bird watching, you can do a lot of other things, like getting all the cultural elements. You can dive. You can um, dance very chain dance. You can get a lot of eat very nice food, and there are plenty of other things that you can do throughout the year. And it, it, actually, you can also occasionally see the Nordic light dancing in the sky in the winter time. So I actually prefer the Varans in the winter time because I, I think that I, I love the colors in the winter time and they're just different. In the summertime it's very, very green. The, the the grass is so green that you just can't imagine that it's real. You think that's a Photoshop picture or something. Mm-hmm. But in the winter time it's it's totally different. But that's when the when the um, sea gets so blue and I like that color. So um it's, it's just very different. And that, that's also something that um, a lot of photographers and, and painters get very inspired of, the changing colors and the total, totally, you know, the ever-changing climate where you can have like four seasons <laughs> throughout the day. You can have, the, have summer in the morning and you can have winter in the evening or, <laughs> or the opposite. And that makes the, um, the sky change all the time and it's, the colors are just, are just very changing. So um, that's yeah. You you can you can never say that on this day there will be we will have a good day or a bad day. It's, it's, it's just ever changing. That's well, one of the charms by living here <laughs> is the is the nature that rules here and not the people. It sounds very spectac- spectacular, and uh, <laughs> I like the winter. So perhaps I should do the winter as well. I'm not that keen on birds, so winter's for me then. Okay. Yeah. Um, are there any tourist-friendly annual events, festivals or anything? Definitely. Um, of course, it depends on what people are interested in. But, mm-hmm. uh, for instance, we have the national festivities called Olaf Circa. That's on the 28th and 29th of July. And that's when we celebrate um, St. Olaf. Um, and it's about, I think it's about almost 900, 1,000 years since that uh, festival started. So it's a very old one. But there are various um, other festivals as well, like the Summer Festival. There is one called the G Festival, which uh, I believe is one of the has one of the most spectacular sceneries in the whole wide world when it comes to a festival. And that's in a small village called Goethe, 
with mountains on three sides and the fourth side is, is um, when you look on um, out on the bay and mm-hmm. the the festival is on the beach and it's just really really spectacular and that's uh, an event that this thing is getting increased um, attention from abroad and we also have a very special um, festival called Summartone which is um, a concept it's a very interesting concept where you can experience one uh, concert for free every day in the summertime on different locations it can be in churches it can be on in bird caves and or it can be on larger scenes and it's just very interesting and authentic this concept and very popular for the tourists as well and it can be on small islands and it can be in the in the city center of Tosan and it's yeah it can vary yep. so that's also a very interesting concept and uh, well there are plenty of other things as well but that's just to mention a few you're listening to The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. Still to come, travel news, but at the moment we're still talking about the Faroe Islands. And now we're getting on to the favourite subject of mine, if you're a regular listener, which is food. Now, if you're not that regular, the reason I ask about food is because I'm a vegan and travelling when you're a vegan can be quite challenging. I know I don't have the figure of a vegan, but trust me, I am. So when I'm asking this question, I'm hoping that there'll be some nice vegan stuff comes out. But so far, I've been disappointed because it seems that, like in Britain, the traditional food is not vegetable-based. But anyway, if you're the sort of person like me who has difficulty in travelling because of your dietary requirements, could be an allergy, or maybe you're just awkward like me, being a vegan, uh, let me know what troubles you have and what tips you can have to share with others on how to make sure you don't go hungry when you're travelling. Facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. But anyway, let's now find out about the food in the Faroe Islands. What's the food like? Is it all fish? A lot of fish and a lot of lamb. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the food based on yeah, the local produce. But it's, and it's just very, very fresh. Uh, we export uh, fish and lamb. Well, not, not that much lamb because we eat so much of it, but we, especially we export a lot of fish and, and seafood to the best restaurants in the world, some of them. Norma, for instance, they get the, the restaurant in Copenhagen um, uh, gets uh, fish from the Faroe Islands. And it's just, uh, it's actually, um, the food in the Faroe Islands is <clears throat> in these days uh, becoming a, a rising star when it comes to fine dining, because um, especially because of the restaurant called Cox that was nominated as one of the five best restaurants in the Danish kingdom uh, this year. And actually, Restaurant Cox, together with the hotel uh, where it's um, placed, called Hotel Furrier, holds the current title as uh, the best sleep and eat place in the Danish kingdom. So that's quite amazing that the best sleep and eat place in the Danish kingdom is not in Denmark today, mm-hmm. but it's in the Faroe Islands at this point. So that's <clears throat> that's definitely one of the highlights. Um, there are also others. So the Nordic cooking is becoming very popular, yeah. and it's this is actually the where it. You know, the the um, a lot of the um, um, raw materials come from. Mm-hmm. You mentioned about already. You've mentioned one hotel, but what's the accommodation choice like? Are there any large international hotels, or is it mostly small run, locally run bed and breakfasts and hostels? Well, actually, we don't have any large international hotels when it comes to to chains, mm-hmm. but we have local hotels, and they have the, the best ones are four stars. And the biggest hotel has 106 rooms. So, and we have various um, classes. We have four stars, three of three stars, two stars, and of course we have bed and breakfast facilities, facilities mm. and hostels as well. So, there are plenty of different possibilities there, there as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's it's something for everyone. Yeah. How easy is it to get around all the islands? Is a fly drive holiday a possibility? Definitely, um, and and we do have a, an extremely well-developed infrastructure with good road connections and subsea tunnels and bridges tying the islands together, and helicopters and boats that serve the other line islands. So um, I would definitely recommend, um, well, almost everybody that could could do it to to drive um, in the islands to to see as much as possible. And and we also we always hear that from the tourists that. People like to drive in the Faroe Islands or go go motorcycling or whatever that is, because the uh, the fact is that whenever they come to abandoned road, there's always a new view opening up to them, and that's what they what they like. Because 
that's the positive thing about being a, a small um, couple of islands, and that's the the view is ever changing, and um, that's yeah, that's something that really interests the tourists that come here. So it, it's very it's very very easy for tourists to visit all parts of the island and to experience the contrast between the capital and the outlying villages, where people to a, a large degree still live off the land and on these small islands and villages with only a few inhabitants. We, as I said, we have islands that only have one family on on each of them. So it's just something that's very different from the European countries. I had a quick look at your website. Well, not a quick look. I investigated your website before putting these questions together, and I saw a bit about churches. And churches isn't something I think about when I go away, but uh, I'm guessing that some of your churches are pretty magical and mysterious. So are there any that should be visited? Definitely. And um, the oldest one is the one in Chishchibbe. That's almost uh, a thousand years old, and that's a must, I think, uh, Mm -hmm. with all the interesting history and uh, one of the old um, Norwegian kings was born there. And so the, the Norwegians are also very interested in the history in that village. And it's, uh, it's, it's just very beautiful. And there's a cathedral right next to it. And um, and there are plenty of other ones. Um, and actually, almost all the villages in the Faroe Islands have a church. Even though they're small, they still have a church. And, uh, and then so you have the... the um, the difference between the old, the smaller churches and the new, bigger ones that are very beautifully made when it comes to architecture and uh, and um, yeah, there there are a plenty of them. So um, and um, you should take the possibility to go to some, to see some of them. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you can you can go to a concert or something in in them as well. Yeah. So and and um, actually, most of them have. Uh, um, are open on Sundays when there are um, ceremonies and so on. So, and uh, some of them are open throughout the week as well. So, you, where you can go in um, any time of day. So, um, they're really interesting, I think, when especially when it comes to to architectural from from the arch- architect view. Yeah. Okay. Did you say earlier that some of your houses have grass on the roof? Definitely. And um, historically, it was because it was very expensive to import material from abroad. Um, Mm -hmm. So grass was probably the only (laughs) local source to use. But the capital, uh, Toshan, um, still has at its core an an old waterfront town called Tinganes, or Areini. And that's still packed with traditional grass roofs and black and and red tarred Mm -hmm. wooden houses. And nowadays, there are a lot of modern houses built who have chosen to the grass roof again and actually Bill Clinton was here some years ago and he got so fascinated by these grass roofs and said that he wanted a grass roof on his place and uh, of course that's something that's um, getting interesting in these days again when it comes to sustainability and, and yeah. those kind of things and that's, it, it's, it looks very charming with, with those houses and it's really really nice because you don't hear the rain when it falls on the roof when it's <laughs> when it's um, when you have the grass. What about my phone call? I want to call my family. Too late now. Please, please, please. Step through now, please. Oh, no. Too late now. Here's the goods. You take them in false bottom bag, you strap them to your body, it's up to you. No. I've, I've changed my mind. I want out. <laughs> Too late now. So, you're offering me a free holiday? Yeah. I just have to bring back something for a friend of yours. That's right. And you'll get some serious cash. Right. Well? Um. Not too late. Don't get talked into trafficking drugs. Once you're in, the British government can't get you out. Don't throw your life away. You can follow me on Twitter at holiday underscore hut. We'll be returning to the Faroe Islands shortly. But for now, I just want to share some insurance tips with you. Uh, Travel insurance is very important. I've mentioned it on numerous occasions in my shows. You should have travel insurance when you go away. If you don't have travel insurance, just make sure you've got a credit card with a huge 
limit just in case something goes wrong. So it's much cheaper and easier to get travel insurance.